Uh, the agenda today is, uh, I mean, all together the way we, are, we have left it last time and uh, that is about the animations in Android that we were doing. This particular animation, there are two types of animation in Android which gets supported. One is frame animation and the other one is screen animation. Uh, frame animation is basically when you have sequence of frames in terms of images, like I have a certain images like the image of an apple, orange and mango and uh, I want to play them in a kind of video format. I have this kind of concept in Android where it is like a frame animation. I can put those frames in a sequence and can let them play one by one. So it more or less pretend like it's a kind of a video which is getting played in front of you rather than you say as it's a kind of images which are navigating in front of you. So that's the beauty of this frame animation and uh, it's really quick, quite fast. So uh, although we know one thing that Android does not support, uh, I would like to know, um, I mean mention this particular thing, that Android does not support your GIF images, the images which I mean which like, which keeps moving, like you can see a couple of images on your Facebook or at other places which looks like uh, uh, a man is just walking all the time or something is happening. That particular thing is something related uh, of that kind of image format. Now how we can bring that kind of concept into Android is by the concept of frame animation. You have sequence of images for which you want to make them or pretend them kind of a video and thereafter put them in a frame and apply a frame animation on it. It works exactly the similar manner more or less it looks like a small video is getting played over the screen. So an animation which is happening, which you can see that it is continuously playing this kind of a pendulum kind of stuff in front of you. Last time also I have shown that these are not, it is not actually a video, rather it is a sequence of a collection of images of each frame that we are playing over here. So that's it. Okay. Uh, now let's, uh, I mean I'm just taking it back and let me quickly open this file. So the layout file is getting loaded. There's an onCreate method where we are defining the IDs for it. Simply that is uh, ID for image view and Similarly, then setting its background as animation list. Animation list here is uh, not an image, rather a XML file which contains the frames inside it and their respective speed. Uh, like for in frame 0, the particular for the how long the frame 0 is going to stay on the screen, it's like 200 milliseconds. So that is what we are defining here. Uh, below to that, we are further expanding the instance of our animation travel class and view dot get background which will return the image view image to it and apply the animation on it and finally return it into the frame animation which is the instance of animation travel class and down the line on the window focus scene that is when your particular window is in focus it's in front of the user and it starts the animation vice versa in other terms uh, if the focus gets lost and then we stop the animation. So that's the idea about this uh, animation drawable thing. It's a small one but very effective in terms of I mean when you are designing really intuitive applications you can think of multiple what do you say as ideological thinking that okay how you can actually plan this all and what are the things involved which you can uh, I mean, where exactly in which criteria under which situation you can put these kind of concepts and then work it out in a similar manner. So you have section or a sequence of images for which against which you want to play it and you want to show certain kind of animation etc etc. So what happens is, is in alpha animation you show something for a time period and then you just disappear it. So you make things visible and visible with a kind of animation set involved inside it. Uh, that we called it as alpha animation. Second animation called as scale animation. Now scaling is something like uh, a zoom in zoom out effect kind of thing that you can apply on an image that will give you uh, 
a view that is like when you click on an image or button the image was of a very small size like a dot and then slowly slowly it was getting bigger in size and takes the complete size of the screen. So this kind of zoom in zoom out effect can be implemented with the help of a scale animation in Android. Uh, third we talk about translate. So translate is something where uh, we actually talk of moving the object actually from one x y coordinate to another x1 y1 coordinate. That is uh, suppose I have an image and that is located at uh, x coordinate as uh, 50 and y coordinate as 200 and I want to move it to x coordinate let's say 75 or 100 or 90 and y coordinate as uh, 400 or 500. There when we are trying to move an object on the screen that is known as the translate thing. You translate actually the position of an object from one place to other place. That's what translate is. Uh, fourth one if we talk about that is rotate. So what does rotate do is exactly like uh, you have an image and you can move it in many like many sort of direction. So you can move an image. Yep, sure. So Shikhar asks, yes, please repeat. Sure, Shikhar. Uh, translate is something as in, in terms of when you are moving the image from one xy coordinate to other xy coordinate. So it's more of like moving an object from one xy coordinate to other xy coordinate. Uh, that is it about the translate. When I'll show the example, it would be more clear to you. Uh, rotate is something in terms of. Okay, Sadeep has put up a question. He wants to know about alpha animation. So the alpha animation is something which gives you a fade in fade out effect. Like something disappearing and then appearing back on the screen. So that fade in fade out effect comes from the concept of alpha animation in Android. That is it about it. Is it clear? Cool. So I was talking about the rotate animation. Rotate animation also works in a similar manner. It just moves the object with whatever input of degree you provide it to. So let's say if I provide it 180 degree, it will be just opposite uh, as a one uh, half round. And then if I provide 360 degree, it takes that thing in place. If I provide 720 degree, likewise, and vice versa, it works. So uh, that's about the rotate animation available in Android. And finally, if you see lastly you have something called as a set. Now I may find a situation where I would like to combine more than one animation into one and create a unique animation out of it uh, because everyone has got their own creativity and they might want to play around obviously a lot in terms of animation. So what if I want to create some uh, animation with a combination of these four or combination of two or three or all of them. So I have got this leverage of uh, set as a particular concept that I can use a set tag or an element in the XML file and can define my other animations into it uh, by identifying what ingredients I have to put inside in terms of animation section like alpha, scale and in what quantity. So that is what we see in the set animation uh, combination of all. Now going ahead is Alpha animation. Alpha, how does it start and what are the value representation for it? Uh, alpha has two parameters, that is from alpha and to alpha. So what happens is from alpha talks about uh, that is 0, 0.0 and to alpha talks about what you say as uh, 1.0 as the highest parameter. That means if it is 2.0.0, .0, it will be completely blank, that is completely transparent. If it is 1.0, it will be completely opaque. That means if you apply an alpha animation to a particular object like image and then you set the alpha value as uh, 0.0, .0 at the starting of the animation, then it will be completely blank, that is transparent. And then slowly after that point period of time for how long you want to play the animation, if you set the value as 1.0, then the image will be like completely opaque. It will be completely visible to the user. So that's how it works and uh, in a similar manner if we see this the scaling animation opaque means opaque is like uh, uh, opaque 
something which you cannot uh, see through translucent transparent opaque shaker this kind of, i mean opaque is something which is like uh, where you cannot see through it's like a uh, one glass is like transparent glass so i can see through that glass to the other side now if i make that if i put a paper on that glass a uh, rough paper black color paper on that glass and then oppose it of transparent exactly like wood so abhijit has uh, put up this so if i put up a paper on it and then ask you to see through the glass can you see it so you can't see it that because it, the object has become opaque that you cannot see through it that's what it means is it clear shikha okay uh, so the scaling a resizing animation is, uh, represents a scale animation you can specify the center point of the image from which it grows outward or inward that's what i explained about that is zoom in zoom out effect so if scaling is like android from a scale that is the float value you need to pass then android to scale what is the float value that is because the scaling is going to happen so what level of things you want to pass uh, all those parameters then from y scale to y scale so that means from x1 y1 that will zero zero coordinates to how big and how large so x and y here are playing like your height and width so you tell them that zero height zero width very small tiny object like a dot and then you ask the particular animation to make it like 100 height width and 100 height so it it happens it it brings from 00 to 100 100 in an animated format so it looks like the zoom in effect is taking place that's what the whole